So in this question, we have an electron moving through a uniform magnetic field. We have the magnetic field vector given right here, a velocity vector, and then a force vector as well. And our job is to find this mysterious value B sub x. So we need some kind of a relationship that correlates with magnetic field, velocity, and force, and also a charged particle, which in this case is electron. And of course, we have such a relationship right here. We know that the magnetic force vector acting on a charged particle is equal to the charge multiplied by the cross product of velocity and magnetic field. So we're going to set things up very carefully. On the left-hand side, we're going to put in the force vector. Now, the force vector is this vector right here. You'll notice that it has only a k-hat component. We may remember that there are three directions here, x, y, z, and the x corresponds with i-hat, the y is j-hat, and the z is k-hat. So because there's only a k-hat component, that would mean that the x and y components are zero. So we could write that force vector as zero i-hat plus zero j-hat, and then we're going to have plus that k-hat or z component. So it's 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19. We're going to put in newtons here, and then that's going to be k-hat. On the other side, we're going to set that equal to the charge. Now, the charge of an electron is negative, and it has a value of negative e. e is a fundamental constant. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. We'll be plugging that in shortly. But now we're going to multiply that by the cross product of velocity and magnetic field. So we're going to set up our cross product using this sort of standard notation. In the cross product, we're going to line up our i hat, j hat, k hat components here. And then we're crossing first velocity. So what that means is you're going to put all the components of velocity across that row right there in yellow. Now the velocity vector is given right here. We can see that the i hat component is 2 and the j hat is 4, but then there is no k hat component. So that would just be a 0. And then the next thing we're going to put into our little cross product template is the magnetic field vector. Now that magnetic field vector is given right here. We can see that the i hat component is that mysterious b sub x. So we're going to put in b sub x right here. The j hat is 3 b sub x. And then there is 0 k hat. So we're just going to put a 0 in there. So far, so good. Now, what we're going to do is simplify this a little bit. And to do that, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by negative e. When you do that on the left side, you have to divide each component by negative e, technically. But of course, 0 divided by negative e is 0, so i hat and j hat will remain 0. So we'll have 0 i hat plus 0 j hat. And then when you divide here, you're going to divide the 6.4 by 10 to the negative 19th by negative e. Remember, negative e would be negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. So you're going to divide by one, negative 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, and you're going to get negative 4. So we would have negative 4 k hat right there. And then on the right-hand side, these negative e's cancel. So why don't we rewrite the contents of that sort of absolute value, which is going to be the cross product. So of course, now the big question is, how do we actually evaluate that cross product there? And when you do so, what you're going to want to do is set up a little cross product template, as I like to call it. And what that means is you're going to have a space here with i hat. Then you're going to have a subtraction sign. Make sure you put a subtraction sign there when you're doing a cross product. And then that's going to be your k hat. And then an addition sign here is going to cor correlate with j uh, Goodness gracious. I don't seem to know my alphabet very well here. So this should be j hat. And then this should be k hat. We'll get it right. So now what do we do? Well, to fill in this little space for i hat, what you're going to do is actually cover up the i hat column like this. And then you're going to do what's called a determinant, which is basically a cross multiplication procedure. You're going to do 4 times 0, which is 0, and then 0 times 3bx, which is also 0. And then you would subtract those outcomes. So in other words, you would have 0 from the first cross multiplication subtracted by 0 from the second cross multiplication. But of course, that's just 0. So we'll fill in a 0 into that blank space right there. And now we're going to try to fill in the blank space for the j hat. So we cover up the j hat column, and we do the same thing. We do 2 times 0, which is 0, and then 0 times bx, which is also 0. We subtract those zeros and still get 0. So this is going to be a 0 right here. But now for the k hat column, it gets more interesting. We cover up that k hat column. We cross multiply. So we're going to do 2 times 3bx, which is 6bx. And then we're going to cross multiply this way. 4 times bx is 4bx. It's a little crowded here, but hopefully you can see that. And then you subtract those outcomes. So you subtract 6bx and 4bx, and you get 2bx. 
And then over here on the left-hand side, we still have the same components. So we'll just copy and paste that. Let me fix that. There we go. So now we just take a look at things, and they kind of line up. You can see 0i hat is equal to 0i hat. That makes sense. 0j hat is equal to 0j hat. Again, that should make sense. But now we take the k hat components on each side, and we set them equal to each other. So we set negative 4 equal to the 2 bx this should read bx over here and now it's easy right we just divide both sides by two and we can see that the value of bx is equal to negative two that was the correct answer to the question and of course that's a magnetic field so let's not forget to put in the unit that should be a negative two tesla so you put a little tesla symbol there and that is the final answer to this question